so in this video, I'm going to look at two things. I'm going to look at moments and how we can use them to find unknowns. And we're going to look at the center of mass of an object. We're going to look at what it is and how we can go about finding it. And we'll put all of those two things together to actually look at how we can balance mo uh, the moments and forces on an object. So let's first start by defining what a moment is. So in previous videos, we've seen that forces can cause an object to change speed, uh, they can cause it to change direction, and they can cause energy to be transferred. So this video is more focused on how we can make an object rotate using a force. So a moment is defined as a force multiplied by its perpendicular distance to a pivot. So on the diagram, the red triangle you can see is a pivot, so we've set up like a seesaw. The force we can see in blue, and the distance is at 90 degrees to the force, and it's between where the force acts and the pivot, like we can see there. So we'd calculate uh, the moment of the force F by multiplying it by that distance D, which is at 90 degrees to it. Okay, so that is how we define a moment. Let's look at how we describe different moments. So um, if we have two forces acting on this object, again with a pivot, see so the green force is causing the object to rotate anti-clockwise and the blue force is causing it to rotate clockwise. So we describe the green force as a clockwise moment and a blue force we describe as having a clockwise moment. Okay, so that's what a moment is and how you describe it in terms of being clockwise or anti-clockwise. Let's now define what we mean by the center of mass. So you'll have seen that we can calculate the weight force of an object, and we do that by multiplying the mass by the acceleration due to gravity, and we use a value typically around 10. So this weight force is caused by a gravitational field. So most of the time we, we see that field is coming from the Earth. So the center of mass of an object is the point on the object which we model the weight force acting from. So for, in simple examples, if an object is symmetrical and has constant density throughout the object, the weight force acts from exactly in the middle of the object. Um, but we'll see how we can find the center of mass if those two conditions are not true. Okay, so now to find our moment and center of mass, let's now look at how we can find the center of mass of something which is not symmetrical or doesn't have constant. So um, we essentially need to be able to hang the object. So if we're going to find its center of mass, we need to be able to hang it. So we also need to hang it freely, so the only force acting on it, or two forces, there'll be a force, a contact force at the point where we're hanging it, and that'll just be the weight force of the object, and that's it. So we can see if we hang it up, one of the things that happens is that the center of mass will hang vertically below the point we hang it. So if we draw a line on the object vertically downwards from the point of hanging, we know the center of mass is somewhere along that line. And to allow us to draw vertical lines, we use something called a plumb line, which is basically just a hanging mass. So if we hang a mass on a string, it will always hang vertically, so we can use that to help us draw vertical lines. So we do that. Next thing we do is then hang it from a different part of the object. So that's what we can see here. So you can see the original line I've drawn on it from the first point of hanging, and now we draw a second line on the object, again using our plumb line, um, because we know the center of mass is going to be along that line also. So if we find the point where those two lines intersect, that tells us where the center of mass of the object is. And sometimes when you see this in books, you'll see a 2G object described as a lamina. So we're talking about the same thing here, and that's how we would go about finding the center of mass. Okay, so we've described 
uh, how to find our center of mass. Now, the third thing we need to define before we can actually start doing things with this information is actually the principle of moments. So we know for an, when an object is stationary or it's traveling at constant speed, the resultant force on the object is zero. So that's something we've got already. So the principle of moments is the same kind of thing, but in rotation. So if an object is stationary or rotating at a constant speed, the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anticlockwise moments. So it's very similar. So that is the principle of moments. We can actually put this to use. So one scenario where we can use the principle to help us explain stuff is explaining why the center, when the center of mass is above the pivot, that an object balances or doesn't rotate or doesn't accelerate. So if we look at this scenario here, so we know there's gonna be two forces acting. We've got the weight force downwards and there's gonna be a contact force upwards from the pivot there. We always get forces in pairs. So since the object here is stationary, we know that the weight force is going to be equal to the contact force, so the resultant force is zero. That's something we know already. Let's now use our principle of moment. So both of those forces are acting at the pivot. So what we say is the horizontal distance, because they're both vertical forces, is zero from the pivot. So each of them has a moment of zero because the distance is zero. So when we multiply the force by it, we get zero. So we know both of the moments are equal to zero. So the clockwise moment must be equal to the anti-clockwise moment. So if the moments are equal and the resultant force is zero, we describe that object as being in equilibrium. And what that means is that it doesn't accelerate and it doesn't rotate. So this is why an object balances if you put a pivot directly below its center of mass is because the forces and the moments are all equal to each other. So when you balance an object, this is what you're doing. You've put your pivot below its center of mass. And there are lots of uh, great videos on YouTube of people balancing things using this principle. Okay. So next, what we're gonna do is look at how we can use our conditions to um, actually calculate unknowns. So our scenario is we've got a two meter long beam with constant density. So already I know the center of mass of the beam is gonna be at its center. So the mass is five kilograms and it's placed on a pivot 0.5 meters from one end. So you can see that on the diagram there, um, where the red pivot is placed and a force acts on the other end of the beam so that you can see that on the right hand side and it says it keeps the beam in equilibrium so we want to try and find what that force is and also what the contact force is from the pivot on the object so we know the pivot is 0.5 meters from the left hand side but we know the, the weight force is going to act from the center of the object because it's a, a symmetrical shape and it's constant density. So we know the weight force is also 0.5 meters from the pivot there because it's one meter from the end, so it's 0.5 from the pivot. We also know that the force keeping it in equilibrium is 1.5 meters from the pivot there. So what we can do is we can work out the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment. So the clockwise moment is going to be the weight force there. So the force would be 5 times 10, because we need the weight force, and we times that by 0.5, giving us a moment of 25 newton meters, and newton meters is the unit of moment. The anti-clockwise is going to be from the force, um, so that's 1.5 meters from the pivot, so it's going to be 1.5 there. The contact force at the pivot is going to have a moment of zero seeing as it acts at the pivot so if we apply the principle of moments which we can because it's in equilibrium we know that 1.5 f must be equal to 25 so that allows us to solve and find f which is 16 and two thirds so 17 newtons to, newtons to two significant figures there so we've found what our force f is let's now find our contact force okay so if we remember that when an object is in equilibrium, 
the resultant force is zero. In this case, what that means is the upward forces are gonna be equal to the downward forces. So the downward force is 50 newtons from the weight force of the object. The upward forces are the F and the contact force, which I've called R. So we've already found what F is, 16 and 2 thirds. So if we take that away from our 50, that gives us what the contact force is. It's 33 Newtons there. Okay, so that finishes what I'm gonna look at in this video. Um, so we've seen how we can apply that principle of moments and how we need our knowledge of center of mass to be able to solve those problems. So that's where we're going to leave it today. If you have any questions or anything's not clear, please feel free to comment on this video. Let me know. I'll see if I can answer your questions. But thank you very much for taking the time to watch.